but it's also time to have your tissue readily available at all times. Spring is on the way, not yet, but we know high pollen counts are just around the corner and minimizing the symptoms may not actually be as hard as you think. Joining us today is the Minute Clinic's nurse practitioner, Carolyn Delker, to give us some tips on not only how to reduce allergy symptoms, but also the challenges of this year's allergy season and when is it not challenging. You know, it seems like we're constantly battling allergies right in New Mexico. All right, so you you work at the Minute Clinic. Yes. I, I assume you all stand ready at any time to help people who do suffer from this kind of thing. Yes, we do. What is what's important to remember as we do enter the time of the year when allergies can get pretty bad? Well, I, I think management of of allergy symptoms is crucial and mm -hmm. um, to identify if you do have allergies. Is it too early to start thinking about that? What are the current pollen conditions out there? The current count, um, I looked this morning and it's at medium range and for uh, through the week it'll be medium and low. Um, and there are uh, websites available. You can go to pollen.com or pollencount.com. Um, and, you know, keep an eye on that if you do suffer from spring allergies. There are, there has to be a high percentage, I would imagine, of people that do. Do you have any indication of just how many people, maybe two in five, something like that, suffer from allergies? Yeah, it, um, a big percentage of people suffer from allergies um, and also people who have other respiratory conditions, um, such as asthma. Um, usually will present with symptoms of allergy. What are the signs? Because I, I know some people maybe struggle with the signs of, hey, I'm, I'm having an allergic reaction to something out there, or right. they think they're sick. So what's the difference? So if you have itchy eyes and nose, um, if you're more teary than normal, mm -hmm. scratchy throat, post-nasal drip, if you're sneezing all the time, that's usually an indication that you have seasonal allergies. And not necessarily a cold. Like, are, there, are, there, are there sort of bridges between the two that might make sense? There are. Um, a viral condition such as a cold will present more with being tired. You'll be more stuffy with nasal congestion, uh, sometimes a slight fever. Okay, so those are the indications, uh, good things to watch for. You talked about management earlier, which to me says you don't have to suffer through this, right? I mean, Correct. there are ways to alleviate the symptoms. Yes. What are they? There are over-the-counter medications. There are antihistamines. There are eye drops and nasal sprays. And so these right here on the far left, these are some of the over-the-counter options that you have. And then you're going to talk about the ones on the end in a second. But these are some of these sort of standby yes. medications. Talk about those. Yes. Um, Eye drops, you can get um, generic in every pharmacy, mm -hmm. uh, CVS. This is an antihistamine. Um, this would be used daily. And um, this is also a different antihistamine. There's many, uh, many brands. You can go down the aisle and find the one that works best for you. There are generic brands and there are also the name brands, right? Yes. Is there any one that works better than the other? No, I think it, it's very individual. You just have to find what's going to work for you. Okay. All right. Now there's some new options too for people, which there you is. may have to take just as often, but are they more effective? Yes, they've just, the, the uh, FDA just approved four over-the-counter purchase steroid uh, nasal sprays, two of them. Um, nasal cords one. There, and, okay. and Flonase. Okay. And uh, they used to be only available by prescription and are now available over the counter. So the effectiveness of those, how, how, how do they really help folks? They're very effective if you use the medication on a, as prescribed. More right. so than these? Uh, you know, again, it's going to be individual. Okay what works for you. All right, so the way then to figure that out would be, of course, to consult with a nurse practitioner or the doctor or maybe show up to the Minute Clinic, find out what uh, what the options are and then have your doctor sort of sort through what would be most effective for you. Yes. Okay, so where can folks go to find out more information? If they are suffering from allergies, maybe they want to set up an appointment just in case to prevent it from happening a little bit later in the season. They could come to us at Minute Clinic. Um, we're at four locations over the city. Uh, we are a walk-in clinic, except most insurances. We're open seven days a week, and we can help you with seasonal allergies. And if needed, we can prescribe you medication. Some folks might be reluctant to do this only because they say, ah, it seems like so many people suffer from allergies. What kind of encouragement can you provide to people who may not want to suffer through this season? Right. So there's things that you can do before the medications. If um, you know the pollen count's high, stay indoors. If you've been outside for long periods of time, change your clothes when you come in. Um, Makes uh, sense. You know, close your windows. Pretty easy. AC. Yeah. Carolyn Delker with the uh, Minute Clinic. So glad to have you again and, and interesting information about what's available for folks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.